Hey everybody, I'm Gus with Egypt Adventures Travel. I create customized itineraries for trips to Egypt, connect travelers with trusted local guides to take care of them in Egypt, and I even lead guided tours myself. You can learn more by going to my website, egyptadventurestravel.com, and I have a few guided tours coming up soon that I would love to have some more folks sign up for. I also want to take a quick second to say that if you find the content on my YouTube channel helpful, please share my videos with someone you know who might be interested in traveling to Egypt. I have a lot of people who've subscribed to my channel and I'm really, really grateful for all of your support and I would love to help more people make their way over to my second home. You can easily share any of my videos using Facebook, Instagram, or even sending a quick email or a text message to your friend who loves to travel, telling them, hey, check out this channel all about travel to Egypt. That would be a huge help for me and to help me create more video content to help all of you make your way to Egypt. Today's video is all about domestic flights in Egypt and what you can bring with you. We're gonna look at the three main domestic airlines in Egypt and talk about the baggage policy for carry-ons and checked bags for each of those airlines. Then, since most of you probably know, reality in Egypt can often differ from written policy, I'm going to talk about my experience over the last 10 years of traveling throughout Egypt, what it was like to bring checked bags and carry-on bags onto my domestic flights. So let's get started. First, a quick primer on domestic airlines in Egypt. Egypt has three main airline companies that travelers will probably use when flying domestically. That means flying within Egypt, like from Cairo to Sharm el-Sheikh or from Luxor to Hergada. These airlines are Air Cairo, Nile Air, and Egypt Air. Some of these airlines also operate flights internationally. For example, Egypt Air is an airline that you can take nonstop from JFK Airport or Dulles Airport in Washington, D.C. from the United States flying without a layover to Cairo. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to talk about baggage policies for these airlines when you're taking them domestically within Egypt. I always encourage travelers to go to the source. I can make a video explaining baggage policies for the different airlines, but it's important to actually go to the airline's website and to check it regularly before your trip to make sure there aren't any updates or changes. So that's why in this video, I'm gonna show you how I went to each website, found their baggage policy, and used that to help make this video. I googled Egypt Air baggage policy to find this site. For domestic routes, flights within Egypt, travelers can check one piece of luggage and the maximum weight is 32 kilograms or 70 pounds, maximum dimensions, 62 inches. And then for hand luggage, carry-ons, they can bring two different pieces of luggage with a maximum weight of eight kilograms, and then they also have the maximum dimensions there too. For Nile Air, I googled Nile Air baggage allowance, which brought me here. So we're looking at flights to and from Egypt, which means you can bring 30 kilograms, on economy class and a handbag that weighs seven kilograms. And then for extra bags, here is the rate that you'll need to pay domestically, only 25 Egyptian pounds, which is less than $2. Nile Air's policies on the measurements for the bags are further down, so make sure that you always check the whole entire page. Their dimension requirements are even further down on this web page. So I had to scroll down to the bottom to see what the measurements for the bags could be. So this is for Nile Air. And for Air Cairo, I googled Air Cairo baggage allowance. They do theirs differently. They do it by zone. So domestic Egypt is considered zone three. So we need to scroll down on this page to find the baggage requirements for zone three. Here we go, domestic Egypt. Here they give the different dimensions for the bag, and then you can also see the weight requirements. Looks like Air Cairo has the lightest weight requirement, 23 kilograms or 50 pounds, which is actually the international standard. So the requirements for 
um, for Nile Air and for Egypt Air are actually quite generous. And then there's more restrictions about checked bags for infants, dimensions, and the types of things that can be brought on the plane. So you should read this entire page of your Flying Air Cairo to know all the information you need to know about baggage. Airport policy, doesn't matter what airline you're going on, dictates you need to declare more than US $5,000 or its equivalent in cash if you have it on you, and you can't travel with more than 10,000 USD cash. You also cannot travel with more than 5,000 Egyptian pounds in Egyptian banknotes on you. This one is very, very important to note. I'll talk about it more later. Now that we've reviewed the actual policies of the different airlines in Egypt and also talked about the tricky subject of taking currency with on a trip, I want to talk about my actual experiences over the last decade of traveling within Egypt and what it was like to bring luggage on a plane as a carry-on or to check bags when flying domestically. As far as it goes for bag size and weight restrictions, for carry-on and for checked bags, I personally have never really noticed an issue if a bag is slightly overweight or if it doesn't match dimensions exactly. Every person who checks a bag onto a flight in Egypt will have the bag be weighed. So they will take your suitcase and they'll put it on a scale, they'll see how much it weighs in kilograms, but I wouldn't worry over much if your bag is one or two kilograms heavier than the requirement. I've never seen anybody who has a bag that's one or two kilograms more be charged anything or be denied being able to put it on the plane. However, be ready just in case that you might have to pay a little extra fee at the airport in Egypt if your bag's overweight. I've never ever seen somebody at an airport in Egypt take out a tape measure and measure a bag. If you have a traditional suitcase that you've purchased, you're gonna be fine. If you have a special item, of course, like golf clubs or scuba diving gear or photography equipment that's really you know, tall or wide or, you know, whatever dimension it is that's out of the requirements that the airline state, you probably will have to pay an extra fee for that. But any traditional suitcase or piece of luggage is going to be just fine when it comes to the dimensions and the weight, as long as it's pretty much within the requirements that they state. And as for carry-ons, I personally have never had anyone at any airport in Egypt weigh my carry-on or check the dimensions of it. That being said, you need to make sure that your carry-on will actually fit in the overhead bins in order to bring it on the plane. Because if it doesn't, you'll need to check that bag. And if you already have a checked bag, it'll probably incur an extra fee. So I always tell travelers it's best to be conservative. If one thinks about a flight in the United States and the bag that they would bring for a carry-on on that flight, it's probably about the same size that would fit in an overhead bin on a flight in Nile Air, Egypt Air, or Air Cairo. Two other things I wanna talk about, liquids and bringing cash or currency with you. For liquids, I've never had anybody raise a stink about having a full-size tube of toothpaste or having a lotion sunscreen lotion tube, for example, that's more than three ounces. I've never had to put all my liquids into one plastic bag. You might run into somebody who's very following the rules at the airport that you're at, and they might tell you that a liquid container is too large and your bag needs to be checked. In my experience, that's never been an issue. What I have noticed every once in a while is bringing a bottle of water through security that's been a problem. I have not been allowed occasionally to bring a full bottle of water or a half full bottle of water through security. So when I've run into that in the past, I just drink the water right there and bring the empty bottle with me, or I toss the bottle and just get a new bottle of water wherever I'm going because bottle of water is available pretty much everywhere that tourists are gonna go to in Egypt. But now I wanna talk about currency because this one is important. I have been stopped before when I've had more than the maximum requirement amount of currency, and it's not fun. I actually one time had to buy a plane ticket at the airport to shed some of the currency that I had, 
and then I had to get that plane ticket refunded later and get the money back because they weren't going to let me through security with the amount of currency that I had on me. I think at the time it might have been about 1500 US dollars in Egyptian pounds. I will often have a lot of Egyptian pounds in cash on me when traveling throughout Egypt because when I'm leading a tour, I'm paying for all the tips, I'm paying for a lot of like meals and little things here and there for my group, so I have to have a lot of cash to do that. So if you have a lot of cash with you, I would recommend splitting the cash up between multiple people maybe have one person who's responsible for having a lot of that cash and then make sure that you give each person a few thousand pounds so that nobody has over the maximum limit. I would also recommend just not keeping tons of cash on you and just going to ATMs more often, maybe every other day, and just pull out more Egyptian pounds as you need them for your trip so you don't have a lot of cash on you at the airport. Of course, there also have been times when I've been through a security checkpoint and have had more than the requirement or the um, restricted amount of cash on me and nobody's ever said anything. So it just depends. But that is an instance where the written policy is what it is and I actually noticed them following it at some of the airports I've been to in Egypt. There you go. We just talked about all of the things that you would need to know in terms of bringing luggage with you on a domestic flight in Egypt. I talked about the three different airlines in Egypt and what their exact policies are regarding baggage, carry on and checked. I talked about what my actual experiences are at the airport. And then I talked about some specific things to note like weight, dimensions, bringing liquids and bringing cash with you on a domestic flight. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you know somebody who's interested in traveling to Egypt or who's gonna travel to Egypt or who loves Egypt, please share my channel with them. I would love to have some more folks watching my videos, and I would love to help more people make their way to Egypt, my second home. And if you've been to Egypt and you've had experiences bringing a checked or carry-on bag onto a domestic flight, leave a comment below and tell us what your experience was like. Did you run into any issues? Was there something that happened that was really easy and it was way better than what you expected? Let us know what your experience was because the more we share, the more it helps other travelers who are making their way to Egypt. Again, I'm Gus with Egypt Adventures Travel. Thanks for watching. Until next time.